What's happening guys, Dan Devidem here. Today we're gonna to talk about the five common mistakes when using a camera gimbal. Roll VT. Yep, what's happening guys? Dan Debenham here. As I say, we're gonna talk about the five common mistakes when using one of these bad boys, the camera gimbal. So without further ado, let's get into number one. Number one is balancing your gimbal correctly. Now, to the untrained eye, this looks like it's a balanced gimbal. It's uh, not going anywhere, it's balancing around, it's doing what it should do. But in actual fact, when I pick it up, and I twist it and I move it around, effectively it's banging itself back to center. So if I go like this, you can see it pops itself back to center. Now, if you've got a slide cam or you've got a, another, another gimbaling device, another stability device, like a slide cam or a glide cam or something like that, they might, you might look at that and think, actually this is perfectly fine because one of those one of those systems actually, when you tilt back up, they find center again. But with a, a gimbal, with an electronic gimbal like this, the motors are the things that find, so you've got three, the motors are the things that find the center for you. So it needs to be balanced correctly in order to be able to make sure that it stays where it should stay. So it's got a tilt, pan, and a rotate axis. So you've got a rotate axis, you've got a pan axis, and you've got a tilt axis and each one of those needs to be selected so that they are set and they are correct. So let's just do that and I'll show you how it's done. Basically, we just move this back and forth. We move this back and forth in and out until it stops in the middle, as you can see those two do. And then we move this one back and forth until it stops in the center. So when your gimbal is actually basically stabilized and it's set to your particular camera and your camera is all set and you need to take into account lens. Effectively what should happen is you should be able to move your gimbal about like so. You should be able to put it into an angle and it should stay or as much near as damn it stay in that position. And it should basically stay where it is. And that is because then it is effectively balanced correctly for those motors and the motors are doing the least amount of work possible in order to get the gimbal to stay in a position that it needs to stay in. So they're not, over, they're not working overtime all the time. And that is tip number one. So let's get into tip number two. The walk. Now, Walking with a gimbal is slightly different to walking with anything else. You sort of walk heel to toe, so you're, if that's the ground and this is the foot, your heel comes down and it rolls and comes off. Um, I'll show you an example of that now. And effectively, it's as if you're walking it, it, with your knees slightly bent, um, heel to toe, and you're either carrying a bowl of water that you don't want to spill, or you've got a spoon with, a, with an egg on in your mouth and effectively you don't want to drop either of those two things. And it's about keeping your body as still as possible to try and take out some of the movements that your body naturally makes in order to keep the gimbal uh, as smooth as it can possibly be and let it do the work. Let it do the lion's share of the work, but help it by making sure that the contact points that you make, i.e. your feet and your hands, are as stable and as static as they possibly can be and as smooth as they possibly can be. So tip number three is holding the gimbal correctly. So for that, let's turn our gimbal on um, and get it into a position where we can. So holding the gimbal correctly, how would we go about holding it? Well, there are a couple of ways of doing that. So basically, if you've got your gimbal and you're holding it up, as you can see, it's keeping the camera as straight as it possibly can. If you've got your gimbal and you're holding it straight toward, straight up, it's straight line up, straight up here, there's nothing to stop the gimbal, the motors that are involved in the gimbal cannot, cannot take out any of this movement because as you walk along, you effectively end up with this bobbing movement. Now the way to alleviate that is to basically get the gimbal, hold it, 
and then move it forward 10, 15 or 20 degrees. So you've got it around about 20 degrees and then that allows, when you're walking, it allows the gimbal to move back and forth and it allows these motors, i.e. this motor and this motor, to take out some of that uh, bounce that you have when you're walking. Bearing in mind from the previous tip, you're already alleviating that by uh, walking using the gimbal sort of steady cam walk, which is basically you've got your knees bent, so you're, you're doing that, and you're walking along, and effectively there is a minimum amount of bounce available um, for the gimbal to have to sort of compensate for. And that is tip number three. So if you're holding the gimbal out, you've got your gimbal, you've got your gimbal at your 20, 20 degree, 15, 20 degree angle, but you're holding it way out here. And these become very, 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 very heavy, very quickly. Um, and it also, it allows bobbing movement, side to side movement. And as you can see, this has got a roll to it. So it will actually roll along. So your video starts to shake and tumble. And the best way to do that is to bring it close to your body and to hold it close and to then use the gimbal in the way that it's meant to be used effectively close up to your body and look past it or keep an eye on the screens or the screen or whatever you've got below you and then you can use it to maneuver and you're maneuvering with your entire body but effectively holding it closer to you allows you to get more stability and it also allows the gimbal to work properly So tip number five is to uh, never, ever, ever put the gimbal on without a camera first being attached to it so that it's in the correct position and you've at least tried to balance your camera on your gimbal first before you turn it on. Um, effectively what happens is, is some of these will vibrate violently, some will shake and spin around violently um, and effectively that's a bit dangerous. It could hit you in the face, it could smash into other things, or the people even. Um, and it, what you're actually doing is you're stressing the motors out, the three motors that these gimbals have, because they're looking for the camera, but the camera's not actually there. Uh, and you're shortening the life of those motors, and you're also maybe damaging the actual gimbal itself and the motors. Um, it's not good practice, and also it's not great for your investment, which you've made when you bought a gimbal. Um, so make sure that the, um, the camera is on there before you actually switch it on. Okay guys, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed and found useful those five easy, common mistakes that people make when using a gimbal that allow you to put that right. Use your gimbal, get the very best out of it that you possibly can, uh, and do go ahead and enjoy getting fantastic footage from this amazing piece of equipment. Cheers guys, thanks very much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.